So here we have it, game number one. Oh, sorry, game number three of this best of three as I try and adjust the scoreboard. There we go. This is Dreamhack Valencia 2014 and spawning to the top left hand position, representing Liquid HyperX. We have the Red Protoss player, Mana. And his opponent down to the lower right, the blue, sorry, the purple Zerg, representing Liquid HyperX. It is Rhett. Rhett won game number one with a Roachling all in. Mana won game number two with, I'm going to say, with a Cannon Rush. He won it there. He delayed the natural and third base of Rhett so long, any transition would be nigh on impossible for Rhett to hold. So both players going for a very aggressive opening. What's going to happen game number three? Is this where we get the the massively long game? The three-hour swarm host games? Who knows? So, wait to see what these two are going to do. We've got, obviously, the Overlord is coming to check to the top position. Nimbus, you can spawn in any of the positions. Other cool thing about Nimbus is the fact that you have a base in your base. So you're able to just expand up nice and easily. For Protoss players, it's worth noting that the front is blocked by debris, which means you can actually get this wall off very, very quickly and easily, and then can still break out later. And that's, of course, very useful when you're only really concerned about wings early on. Again, we're seeing Mana go for the one gas, one gate into an expansion. Actually, no, he's not expanding yet. Standing in that second pylon first. Getting a little bit ahead of myself there, but this is all looking good at the moment. Red, on the other hand, uh, that was a hatchery first opening into the spawning pool. On well, Nimbus, a pretty safe build going for that because you do have, your, of course, your natural up in your own base, so it makes it quite easy to fend. You've already got the creep spread here, and that's actually the biggest thing. This creep spread here means you can put down a spine crawl as an emergency if you need to, uh, whereas on other maps where your natural base is outside your main, you can't obviously have the creep spread to chuck down a spine. This is a really smart move, though, by Red. He's just checking around to make sure nothing untoward is happening in case another cannon rush was coming through, which is certainly a possibility on this map. Um, one big thing about this season's maps in the ladder pool is that there's no absolutely massive maps. If you think back to Altrim Stronghold, for example, an absolutely huge map. Nimbus, while it's a four-player spawn map, isn't that large. Now, Red is taking his third base very early on. This was a hatch, pool, hatch opening. But still, this third came down exceptionally fast. Uh, that came down at just past 3 minutes 30. A very early on point. Not actually up against that much of a quick expansion out of mana. Mana took this natural base, his natural base, only 23 seconds ago. So just before the 4 minute mark. So Red had his third coming up before the natural of mana. Now... Against a gateway expand, hatch, hatch, pool is pretty good. Hatch, pool, hatch. You sacrifice a bit of production for it. But you are still at a bit of risk. My biggest concern for Rhett is the fact that mana hasn't been scouted. But also there's only this single gas. And there's also chrono boost coming down on this warp gate. Three additional gates could seriously be on the cards. Definitely something we may see if we get a pylon put down, which we haven't yet. Three additional gates and a lot of zealots could be on the cards. Probably one of the best builds off of this one gas expansion style play. It means if you haven't made a roach run as your Zerg, you're going to be running into a lot of problems. Interestingly that there isn't a pylon down. Another probe getting pulled. Despite one already being here. Does pose some interesting questions. Maybe just trying to freak things out a little bit. Wait to see when this pylon does come down because the gateways are finishing up. Uh, there's the additional two more gateways coming down at the front here. Um, one down there. Where's the rest? Okay, so there's two up here. The Overlord going to be able to scout a couple of them. I uh, should be able to see three. We'll also be able to see the one gas, and that pretty much gives it away. But Red doesn't have a Roach Roll, and that's going to really start hurting. Mothership Corp, able to get a bit, little bit of damage down, but doesn't, ab isn't able to save that Zealot. Spine Quarter coming, so Red is really aware now of what's coming on. He knows that this is a bit of bad time. Three gates, one gas. Lots of Zealots are incoming. Lots of links being produced. Spine Quarter is also on their way out. Only one, though, at the moment. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Of course, the pylon hasn't been taken out yet. A couple of stalkers thrown into the mix as well, and I find that... Oh, quite a few stalkers now actually thrown into the mix, which is quite interesting. Generally, off of that one gas, you see a lot more zealots being produced, especially when you do go up to the four gates. The money is there, though, for mana. He got the gas very early on. Pushing now. Going to try and get a couple of shots off on these queens. Able to pick one of them off. Backs away for one spine crawler hit. That's a good trade. He's also going to be able to keep this front pylon up. 
A lot more Lings being produced, 30 of them on their way down. Adding into the 23 already there. This is a really tight choke though, a couple more Zealots going to be trying to come through. Trying to keep these Lings away from the Queens as best they can. The Spine Crawler could end up taking quite a bit of damage. One Queen falls, that leaves just one more. There's the Time Warp, that's going to help those Zealots and Stalkers trade better against the Zerglings. The Zerglings still charging on in, speed is not yet done for them. That's going to take a little bit longer to get through. The Zealots still warping in. More Stalk. The Stalkers all staying alive as well. That's causing a bit of a problem. The Queen is up as well. 7 HP can get picked off relatively quickly. The Zealots being warped in beautifully and positioned amazingly. Preventing the Zerglings getting to the Stalkers. The Zealots still being microed. Still being controlled very, very nicely. But they are dwindling. More warpings come through. Red having to produce a lot more links to try and deal with this. Mana able to snipe off that queen there, focusing on that third hatchery. And generally, if the third hatch goes down, it is a terrible spot for the Zerg player. They want to keep that up at all costs. Next wave of warpins should be happening imminently. There they go. It's going to be some stalkers. Interesting decision there. Since the Zealot count is starting to get a little bit lower, perhaps anticipating a Rotoron to have been completed by now. The stalkers giving good range. Down goes the queen. GG is called and Mana is able to defeat his teammate Red to take this series 2-1 and advance on to the winner's game of this group.